Hello and welcome back to the Lilith Petcast. I'm your host, James, and today we are looking at the episode Planet on Rio. Now, before I begin, I do want to apologize or at least explain what's going on. So, last episode I promised you an episode sooner than you're probably hearing this. And what happened was I actually moved. So now now I'm in a new place and, you know, I kind of had to get used to it and set everything up and, you know, that takes time and effort and figuring everything out. So this is probably the soonest I could have gotten this to you. All right. And I don't know when the next episode is going to come out. In all fairness, I do have to figure out a new schedule. And, you know, figuring all of that out takes a little time. But I will try to remain weekly, even if weekly is a little earlier than or later than you expected. So, on to the episode. Blythe gets a call, and she does have a different ringtone than the one she had in What Meme Worry. And I guess that ringtone was a special ringtone for Jasper? Or at least her friends. Maybe maybe it's because her friends spent all night with her beating the Scott Pilgrim game. So they have precious memories of that and that's that's their link. You know what? You know what? I love this head canon even more. Uh, I say that because this sounds more like a generic ringtone than than the chiptune thing. So She answers, and the pets really want to know what's going on, but uh, Blythe tries to get away from them because they're being noisy and stuff. And, like, Russell is like, hey, quiet down. If we want to know what Blythe is talking about, we need to get up in her face and see her facial expressions. So, uh, they pile up, and Russell gets close to her face and relays her expressions... As such, like she's surprised, she's confused or whatever. But then Blythe sees this and gets angry and she walks away. And Russell thinks that uh, she's angry at the person on the phone and calls that person really annoying. And, you know, the person Blythe is making that face at can be very annoying (laughs) at times, Russell. You're not the best person, Russell. But we're gonna we're gonna get to an even worse person later in this episode, so you know, take what you can get, I guess. So Blythe finishes her phone call and tells the pets what's up. So she got invited to do a samba school in Rio de Janeiro for Carnival because of her work at the Big Feathered Parade. Pepper asks what a samba school is or makes a remark on how it's like a school, but Blythe explains that it's just a group of dancers or whatever for um, Carnival and a float, I guess. And you know what? I'm, I'm going to take a step back. Uh, I don't know how much uh, you really want your teenage daughter to go to Rio for Carnival, exactly, if you're American. But, I mean, I guess it's fine. It's a weird cultural thing, I guess. But, I don't know, it's, uh... Something that always weirded me about this episode, but I guess it is just a cultural thing in in essence. But so they're going to Rio de Janeiro, but Blythe realizes that she needs seven dancers. And Vinny says, and you only know one. And Vinny dances for a bit, but then falls because he's not the best at dancing, but he really tries. And... 
it's also not the only dancer Blythe knows, but I would understand why Blythe does not want to call up the people at Shake a Leg. Or maybe couldn't. I don't know. It's a weird, weird thing they did. And I'm not sure what the legal precedent on that is. So Minka says that once you hear the music, you just get into it and starts dancing yourself. So everyone asks if Minka's been to Carnival, and Minka says she's gone several times, but only in her head. Vinny points out that while Minka is dancing, she is in Rio right now. So then it goes to the intro, and then once we're done with that, Blythe asks Minka how she can dance like that. Minka says that her heart has always been in Brazil, and that samba must be in her blood. Vinny says, well, that explains it. I'm cold-blooded, so it doesn't flow as well, even though it does. I don't remember the exact line, but I just remember it being weird, because, you know, cold-blooded doesn't necessarily have to do with blood, or it might, but... The, the terms cold-blooded and warm-blooded refer more to how you keep your internal temperature. So warm-blooded animals have a consistent internal temperature. Cold-blooded animals have the internal temperature be the same as their external temperature. Now, what confused me about this is why do warm-blooded Creatures such as ourselves get cold when it's cold. That's because that's only on the inside. Our outside still gets cold when it's cold. And a step up from that is that uh, heat likes to escape or whatever, or tries to escape, so that might make us a bit colder or you know that that helps with making us cold and that's why like 70 degree water is cold to us because on the inside we're at like 98 or whatever this has been a, a lesson in uh, biology from the littlest pet cast <laughs> anyway Minka says that uh, she can teach Vinny and everyone else, and they realize that there's seven of them, and they could be the Samba school. Blythe thinks that it is crazy enough to work, but then she realizes that she needs to convince her dad, which she thinks will take some doing. Cut to Roger immediately being on board with it, and Blythe continues to beg until she realizes that Roger is immediately on board for his teenage daughter going down to Rio de Janeiro for Carnival. At least she's going to be working, I guess? I don't know. It's a, it's a weird culture thing, I guess. I don't know. Like, like it, it, just, it just doesn't sit entirely right with me, you know? It's not that I shouldn't encourage young girls to go to carnival but it just seems like a weird thing to put in your children's show although i guess it's also a weird thing to put in your children's movie and rio came out like three years earlier than this episode so sure but it's still a tad odd in my opinion, but that's just me, an American, speaking, you know, as an American, not as a Brazilian. So, uh, Roger says that they were going there anyway, and wonders about the coincidence. So, on the plane, Emma is back and is going through her plans for their vacation in Rio. All right, there is an edit point there, and I realized that the room I am currently in is a bit more echoey. 
So I had to lower my recording volume down just for a bit. Just not just for a bit, just a bit. And we can get on with the episode. So Blythe informs Emma that this really is not a vacation, but Emma really wants to go everywhere. And this includes the Tajuka Rainforest, Ipanema Beach, and all of the best restaurants. And Emma's planned itinerary is as long as that uh, list that SpongeBob has that says go to work, 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 go to work etc on it and that Blythe says she needs time to get her samba school ready. Emma fits it into a slot but Blythe says she needs more than five minutes to do everything. She says her costumes are done and before she can continue she gets interrupted by the other passenger on the plane. Ramon! Bum bum bum! Blythe is shocked and Ramon is feeling as fabulous as ever. But Ramon senses hostility in Blythe and begs for forgiveness. Blythe introduces Emma to Ramon and how Ramon stole her designs and almost got away with it. Ramon says that was his lowest point, even lower than being on his knee right now. And Emma points out that they are technically 30,000 feet in the air. And Ramon thinks, yeah, that's a good point. Blythe is still distrusting of Ramon, but Ramon says that he has turned a new leaf. And as evidence, he shows off his new muse, Ramona, a scarlet songbird with a suspiciously blank look in her eye. Ramon laughs, and Blythe and Emma are weirded out. And Blythe seems a bit hesitant, but trusting of the new Ramon. Ramon hopes to see... A good, honest competition, and Blythe wants that as well. She puts out her hand, and he shakes it aggressively, much like uh, a certain world leader would shake it. Zoe remains suspicious, and Ralston says that, you know, people deserve a second chance, right? And Zoe's like, yeah, but we should keep an eye on him, because... We should give him a fair shot, but we gotta keep an eye on him in case he pulls this stunt again. And um, Vinny's like, he's not gonna say anything if he's planning something foul. But Zoe says, the bird might sing. And Penny is excited because she loves songs. Russell tries to explain the metaphor, but Penny is stuck on the literal. And thinks that uh, it would be a weird song for uh, Ramona to sing about Ramon causing trouble and then sings a little bit of it and Russell just face palms. <laughs> so Zoe goes up to Ramona while Ramon is sleeping to try to talk to her. So he's like, oh, I don't bite unless I'm defending my owners. That's a joke. And Ramona does not respond. And Zoe gives up and says she's not talking. And then Penny says, I thought you wanted her to sing. So <clears throat> they land in Rio. And Blythe takes in the scenery. Ramon rushes out and covers his tracks by saying they've scheduled a tour of the sites. Blythe thinks that's cool. And Zoe is still hesitant to trust Ramon and tells Blythe about her suspicions. But Blythe asks what he could do. Zoe notices that Ramon has run off, and Blythe goes to check the luggage and finds that the bag with the costumes in it are, is missing. So, in the hotel, the pets are being very loud, and Blythe asks them to quiet down. Blythe says that Ramon may be still at our luggage, but maybe it's just lost in this story kind of stuff happens all the time. Uh, she hears a knock at the door and thinks it's the airport with her luggage. However, it is Emma and she wants to go on a tour of the Tejuka rainforest. Blythe feels a bit down, but Emma says that this is the perfect way to de-stress. Blythe is on the fence, but Minka throws a pet toy at her. Blythe asks for a moment. Emma says, sure, uh, they close and uh, Blythe talks to Minka. 
Minka really, really wants to go to the Tajuka Rainforest, and Blythe agrees and takes uh, Minka along with Emma to the Rainforest. Emma goes right on her tour guide spiel and asks everyone to step lively and keep an eye on your tour guide's flag. I love Emma. I love Emma. She is, she is great. I wish she was in more episodes. You know what? I mean, this is a thing I've sort of been complaining about this whole time, and it's going to come up in a different area, but... I kind of just wish this show has a 45 minute or a 40 minute time slot instead of like a 20 minute or like, you know, a full hour instead of a half hour time slot. Like, I think they could do more and develop more things and make the show better with more time. But I mean, I don't know how you would get that. I'm not sure. Like, hour-long shows were a surprise to me when I found out they existed. But, like, I don't know. It's uh, it's a bit weird. I, I think having more of the show would make it a better show, you know? Like, like, they can take their time and do more things instead of, like, you know, turns on a dime and stuff. It's just, it's just weird is all that. Like, this feels like it should get more time than it does. So, that's that's part one of this rant. Part two will be coming up later. So, Russell wants to wait, but Zoe proposes to search for Ramon and the luggage. She then goes into roughly Tommy Lee Jones's monologue from The Fugitive, and Russell interrupts her and says that they could just sneak into Ramon's room down the hall. But Zoe really wanted to finish her monologue. <laughs> so first Steel, then The Fugitive. Zoe must really like this kind of action-y film. So they go out to the hall, and make their way to Ramon's room. Penny Ling is the last to arrive, and she bumps into everyone else. She then picks up the lid on the platter in front of Ramon's room and sees a half-eaten burger and goes for it, but everyone else stops her. So they wonder how they're supposed to get in, and Vinny says, I got this. He then pulls out a bobby pin and inserts it into the card reader, but it just shocks him. Ramon opens the door after the shock, and they hide. Ramon leaves, but before the door closes, the pets, hiding under the platter, walk inside and use the lid to hold the door open. After they exit into Ramon's room, Penny is revealed to have polished off the rest of the hamburger, and she is chewing it and going, Mmm! While Russell just looks at her in disgust. (laughs) So they see Blythe's suitcase and go to grab it. Ramona comes out to stop them, however. Russell tries to negotiate, but Vinny points out that she might have trouble hearing because of this wire that's stuck in her. (laughs) Russell realizes that she's not a real animal. She's a robot, and she appears to be recharging. Zoe unplugs her, and she goes into attack mode. The pets duck and dodge all of the attacks Ramona makes, and make it out of Ramon's room with Blythe's suitcase. Ramon and Ramona, that is a that is a hard tongue twistery thing. But we can do it. We can do it. Ramona takes pictures of them as they leave. So Blythe, Emma, and Minka are lost in the Tajuka rainforest, but Emma doesn't really think she's lost. So they investigate to find a way out while Minka, hearing the sounds of the forest, wants to join in the fun. Uh, Blythe allows her to, but tells her not to wander off too far. And, uh, like, she then sees a butterfly and follows it to her butterfly friends. 
Yeah, okay, so it, it is confirmed that this butterfly is female, so just just that that's that's something this episode does. Okay. And by butterfly friends, I meant friends of the butterfly that are in the forest. And we cut to a song. The Song of Brazil. And it's just a really nice charming song about brazil and the rainforest and the animals and like some of the things they have like maracas and there's even a like band like a three-piece jazz band or something made up of birds and it's it's really lovely but there are a few things i do want to point out one there are mosquitoes and they join in because they love to rhyme. That's a, that's a lyric. Like, like we're we're in Brazil. These mosquitoes spread dangerous diseases. <laughs> I I don't think a lively portrayal of them is healthy in more ways than one. <laughs> like, like even even if like. The mosquitoes seem nice. Like they they have like a disease with them probably. I don't know. I'm not I'm not saying Brazil isn't a nice place and you shouldn't go. I'm just saying that like it's complicated and you really should get your shots and before you go to Brazil because you don't want to end up with Zika. And no one wants to end up with Zika. It's really dangerous. So, another thing about these mosquitoes is that they talk. I forgot to mention this last time with the bees, but I kind of forgot. The bees talk, too. And the mosquitoes and bees talk, but the butterfly doesn't talk. The fly doesn't talk from a, what did you say? So... Where, where are the flies and the butterflies on the, like, scale of getting some form of human conscious? Because, like, I mean, they kind of have it. They really have it, but they just don't speak. Like, uh, you know, mosquitoes and bees. So, it's, it's, it's weird and... Knowing what point uh, things happen, I don't know. And I just realized that uh, Esteban and Blythe's crush can talk, even though he's a bird, and I said birds didn't develop that in, uh, what did you say? But that just might be Blue Jays at that point, because Esteban is from Colombia. It might just be like a South America to North America thing. I don't know. Th this is this is weird again. Everything not weird is weird again. We're we're doing that. So, I guess back to the episode and the few other details that I wanted to bring up. So, in the background of the song and maybe of the episode you can see the Christ the Redeemer uh, statue. And I find this kind of funny because it's like we don't want to show something religious on TV for children. But at the same time, it's a really big part of Brazil. So we kind of need to show it. So what do we do? And it's in that middle spot where you just put it in the background with as little detail as possible but still make it recognizable as such and it's really really hilarious in my opinion because like it's so on the razor's edge of like trying to balance like representing rio and not being religious <laughs> in some way because like sort of against kids tv things i guess you know, I don't even know what's, what's up with that. Why? Like, it is a cultural thing. I don't, I don't know. Whatever. Either way. Uh, 
Let's move on with the final thing uh, about this song that I wanted to bring up is that they say soccer in one of the lyrics, but in Brazil they say football or football. I don't know how to say it in Portuguese. Uh, it's spelled F U T E B O L and I'm assuming it sounds like football, but with a more Portuguese thing to it. I don't know. So anyway, after the song, Minka catches up with Blythe and Emma, who are still lost. The butterfly from earlier shows up, and Blythe wonders if they if it knows a way out. The butterfly nods and begins to show them. Emma thinks that uh, they should go north, but Blythe trusts the butterfly and drags Emma along the direction the butterfly is going. They see the city, and Emma's like, yeah, I was going to get here eventually. <laughs> so, back at the hotel, the pets inform Blythe that Ramon did indeed steal her stuff. And Blythe is upset that she ever trusted Ramon in the first place. Again. Russell says that they got the costumes back, so there's nothing to worry about. But Blythe thinks they need to redo the whole thing because Ramon will just copy everything again. The butterfly comes back and Blythe lets her in. She says that the butterfly let her out of the rainforest. And Minka thinks that she can lead them to new costumes. And the butterfly instinctively picks up on that and turns around and Blythe gets inspired and asks for everyone's help. We cut to a montage of Minka trying to teach everyone to samba, but they don't quite get it while Blythe is working on butterfly-themed costumes for everyone. And, you know what, we'll, we'll continue. Uh, Ramon reviews the footage off of Ramona and berates his own robo-bird. But then they go on to plan B. And uh, Ramon laughs and says, for clarification, the original plan was plan A. So Emma, Blythe, and the pets go to the Samba Drome, where the Carnival Parade ends. Emma wants to take pictures, but Blythe really needs to work on the float. She goes to pick up her supplies, but finds out that her supplies were already taken by Ramon. And it is weird... Because, like, shouldn't Ramon have also gotten his own supplies as well? Is he just sneaking into this competition? Do they not have him after his attempt? But, like, he just shows up anyway or whatever and steals stuff to try to win? It is really weird. Blythe and the pets ponder about what to do. And Zoe suggests stealing it back. But the butterfly comes down. And Blythe realizes that she doesn't need to stoop to Ramon's level. They can use her dad's plane. And Blythe thinks it'll take some talking to. But Roger agrees right away again. And Blythe still begs until she realizes what just happened again. So... Uh, they fix up the plane to make it look like a butterfly. And Roger likes it so much, he says he might just keep it like that. And Blythe entrusts Emma to guide her dad back to the Samba drone. Emma is convinced she can, but evidence in the episode suggests otherwise. Blythe heads down to help the pets practice, and Minka is doing her best, but is being a bit aggressive about it and even after two hours things aren't shaping up well the butterfly comes back and Blythe asks it for help and the butterfly agrees and goes off to help okay I'm you know what? I'm almost to this rant I'm gonna I'm gonna let it sit for a bit more so uh, Emma and Roger are on their way, and Roger is unsure, but Emma seems to know what she's doing. She says that it's a five-minute drive unless there's traffic, 
which there is. So Blythe is worried that they won't get here in time. Ramona comes to gloat about how the pets seem to be having a hard time learning how to dance. And Blythe vows to beat him and then makes a snide remark about how it's like beating herself because all of it was stolen. Ramon says it's better to steal than to not have anything and then brings out his samba school. And Blythe is shocked to see that it's just full of robot birds. And Ramon is like, they're better than real pets who need love and care and affection. And they can also actually dance, unlike your stupid pets. And Ramon laughs his way to the parade. And during the parade, Ramon and his mechanical birds are impressive. They, 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 they do actually look really good. And Ramon says, uh, he has this in the bag. What bag, you ask? I don't know. It's an expression. And, um, no, I'm going to save that too. So, Blythe says to go on and hopefully the plane will catch up. And then Emma keeps going with directions, but Roger is sick of it and decided to take matters into his own hands. So he lifts off and decides to fly to the Samba drone. So uh, during the parade, Minka starts dancing, but she is alone because the other pets seem to be afraid of her. Okay, part two of the This Show Needs More Time rant. So, I get what they're going for, but I don't know if they established it enough. I understand that Minka might have gotten more abusive over time, but... And, like, the pets are afraid of her and stuff. So they don't want to come out and dance, but... Like, there just wasn't enough time to, like, properly set all of that up. We we see bits and pieces of it. Like, but it's not, it's not as great as, you know, it would be if there was more time dedicated to it. And, like, kids' shows can do this well. And this does it all right. I just think it needs more time. It's not a bad example. It's just... On... Finished, I guess. If that makes sense, I don't know. So, whatever the case, Mink is alone. Her friends are scared of her now. However, the butterfly returns and brings... Her forest friends, minus the mosquitoes, so it's basically the tapirs, the frogs, and the birds. And they start to dance and sing a reprise of Song of Brazil. And the rest of the regular pets join in because it starts looking actually quite fun. And, you know, they get into it. Like Minka said at the beginning, once you hear the music, you just get into it. And, you know, that's a, that's a thing. So, you, you might have noticed that this butterfly is actively helping Blythe, who she met just today. So, that, that seems a bit odd, but, like, it's very intentional on the part of the writing team. But why, though, is my question... My answer? Well, it's time we go into a bit of headcanon. So, for last year's carnival, or a previous carnival, whatever, whatever, whenever, something, uh, the butterfly was part of a team with her owner. Now, Ramon being the lying, cheating sack of dung he is, 
lied and stole and cheated his way into the butterfly's owner's um, costuming and float stuff and made it his own. Depressed, the butterfly the butterfly's owner wanders into the forest and for whatever reason doesn't come out. That's that's a little dark, so I guess that's why they didn't want to show it, but that's my theory. So when Ramon comes back and the butterfly sees that he's back on his uh bull poop. Uh, he dis- she decides to help the one person who can truly beat her this year, Blythe. And that includes getting her out of the forest, inspiring new costumes and floats, and getting all of the forest animals minus the mosquitoes to come in because a butterfly deserves revenge. That is a something I did not think I would say in a serious context, but this is serious context. So, so everyone is impressed and the judge awards Blythe's team the winners of the dance part of this competition and crowns Minka as the queen of drums, I think, is the title this is the not netflix era so i can't turn on subtitles to check so when asked where the float was flight is hesitant but then sees it coming in and points it out so the plane lands and when the judges see it they give her first prize they give ramon a runner up and ramon is really really frustrated <laughs> so This whole thing makes me think that Ramon, combined with his, like, stealing and thievery, along with his actual talent at stuff, makes me believe that he is the Eric Sparrow of the Littlest Pet Shop universe. A phrase I didn't think I would say as well, but, you know, here we are. Ramon is the Eric Sparrow of the Littlest Pet Shop. (laughs) Blythe comes over to gloat and says that he he came in second place, don't worry. Oh wait, I came in second place because... And then Ramon goes, I know, I stole your designs. And Ramona explodes on Ramon's shoulder. And Ramon remarks on how this is going to be an awkward flight home. But then Roger comes over to point out that this is the pet jet. And since he doesn't have a pet, he can't ride on it. And Ramon storms off and Roger, Blythe, and Emma and the pets dance to end the episode. And spoiler alert, we do not see Ramon for the remainder of the series. So... It could be possible that Ramon is just shanghai in Rio de Janeiro. <laughs> and that is so good. That is exactly what the butterfly would want. And Roger helped deliver on it. This is the best. Okay. Um, yeah, so... Uh, as for my thoughts on the episode itself, I think it's a pretty good episode. It's a really good follow-up to the original Ramon episode. And we see, like, Ramon be more evil and conniving. And, you know, stuff. Since we know he's evil at this point. He's not trying to hide it from anyone. Especially Blythe. And, like, Blythe and the Butterfly and Minka was great. I like Roger and Emma. They're always great. This episode's just great. And, you know, that's that's kind of something I need after coming off the last few episodes. But, you know, it also has its weird moments. And I guess, like, 
it has the you know voice problem where like Latin American people are being voiced by not Latin American people or people of Latin American descent. But I don't really know what to do with that. I've explained that before. And aside from that, I think it's all good. And um, I guess that about does it for... This episode of The Littlest Petcast, be sure to leave your comments and reviews on Shout Engine, on Apple Podcast, on the Google Play Store, and wherever else RSS feeds go when their dads immediately say it's okay for them to go. And be sure to tune in next time for the episode Littlest Bigfoot. Thank you.